Jesus is the
Amen. And somebody said, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. And I know that the devil can use me. Amen. With my mind stayed on the Lord. So we're grateful and we're thanking God for his grace and his mercy. As always, we want to commit the service into the hands of the Lord. After which, amen, the service is in the hands of the Lord. And we listen and we follow the direction of the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Ghost that have come to lead us and to guide us into all truth. Because we don't know the way, but if we trust the Word of God and allow the Holy Ghost to lead us and guide us, amen, He will always lead us to the way. And that way is Jesus Christ. So at this time, we're going before the Lord in prayer. We're going to ask the compressly to lead us in prayer. As always, the Holy Ghost will glorify Jesus. Those that are sick and afflicted, the bereaved families, the Lord will continue to bless. Lord, remember backsliders and sinners also. In Jesus' name. Deacon Presley. Our precious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank the Lord yesterday being in the house of prayer once again, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for waking up this morning, starting out the way, activity of them. We ask you, Lord, for us to step by tonight, Lord, lead us and guide us. Help us look to the hill which is coming out for help. Rely on our help that's coming to bless those that are sick, those that are shed in tonight, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that we read family, Lord, give them the strength. Touch their body right now, so don't, don't, don't let those that are sick tonight, Lord. Let the Lord, Pastor, give him the strength, bless his home and his family. The dawn of service tonight, get to hear what your word has to say tonight, Lord. Open up our hearts and minds tonight, you understand your word. We need your word just to make it out of here right now, Lord. Take all you've done, what you're about to do. We thank you, we praise you, give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, University. <laughs> Amen. And we greet you once again in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to go right into Bible study this evening. Amen. Something that we have uh, taught on through the help of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We're just going to do a little review of it tonight. Because the Word of God is ever new to us every day. Amen. So we want to call your attention to the book of Daniel chapter number 2. Amen. The book of Daniel, chapter number 2. And we want to deal with Nebuchadnezzar's dream. All right, Daniel, chapter number 2. And you find it and you have it. Amen. You say, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Daniel chapter number two. Praise the Lord. And the Holy Ghost glorified Jesus. And it reads thus, And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dream, dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep break from him. Amen. As Daniel began to speak, who is the author of this book, and just to give us a background of Daniel, amen, Daniel was from the captive of Judah, of which Nebuchadnezzar went and besieged the city and brought them captives back to Babylon. Not only was Daniel brought back, but also, amen, there. Babylonian names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, amen, was brought to, amen, Babylon along with Daniel, amen, because Nebuchadnezzar told one of his captains to bring some of the men that he would be able to train them and that they would be able to stand in the presence of the king. And not only that too, but as I begin to study this scripture and this chapter, Notice in chapter number one, praise the Lord, that at one point, amen, before they would even go on to stand before the king, they, was, they had to look a certain way. Amen. They couldn't go and stand before the king looking all lean, amen, looking all depressed, looking all sad, 
Amen. They have to come before the king, amen, with a certain outward look. So it was decreed, amen, that the men that would come and stand before the king and be in the presence of the king, they would have to drink wine and eat from the king's table. Praise the Lord. But when Daniel got word of it, chapter number one said Daniel refused. Amen. To defile himself with the king's wine and with the king's bread. And Daniel refused to eat from the king's table. Now, think about this now, that you rejected, amen, food that the king offered. Now, the problem with the food was not that the food wasn't good. Praise the Lord. Yes, the wine was intoxicated. But Daniel's reason for not wanting to eat from the king's table is because the food was also offered unto idols. And Daniel realized that what was done, and according to the word of God, God told Israel, Thou shalt have no other God before me, and thou shalt bow down to no other God before me. So Daniel knew that the food, amen, was offered to idol before it was served on the king's table. Now, I took note that Daniel was willing to die, amen, for the word of God than to compromise and eat from the king's table. Now, many people today are compromising Amen, like I say, to get along, to go along, to get along. Amen, they, they want, you know, the praises of people. Well, I don't want people to think of me this way. I don't want people to say this about me. I want people to speak well of me. But I believe we talked about last week, Jesus said, be careful when all men speak well of you. Amen, because you know that is not life. That is not the order of life or the way of life for people to always speak well of us. You're going to have people that is going to speak against you. You're going to have those that are for you. And you're going to have those that are not for you. You're going to have people that will speak well of you. And you're going to have people that will speak evil of you. Now, these things are not new. Praise the Lord, because Jesus said it, he told the apostles, if they have done it unto me, they will also do it unto you. But Daniel made up in his mind that he was not going to compromise right for wrong. And I believe that is a lesson for the church today, that the church must not compromise wrong, you understand, right for wrong. The church must stand on the word of God. Now, I'm not saying that you're not going to pay a price. All right, to follow Jesus, everybody is going to pay a price. I talk about something, and you all know this, that whenever you sign up to go in the, in the army, the army, amen, never tells you, amen, or promise you that you're going to get back home alive. Praise the Lord. Once you sign up in the army, you are saying there's a possibility that I may have to lose my life and I may not return back home alive. Praise the Lord. But once your mind is made up uh, and you realize the cost, amen, to join in the army, it could be a matter of life or death. So many people still sign up in the army knowing that there's a possibility that they may not be able to kiss their wife anymore, may not be able to kiss their husband anymore, or just to embrace their mother, father, brother, whomever. Praise the Lord. But every believer must realize this. In order to follow Christ, there is a price. All right? There is a cause for every believer to follow Christ. Now, once your mind is made up, nothing that people say or do will detour you from following the Lord. Praise the Lord. Once you realize, amen, that what you are doing and you're standing for that which is right, you're not worried about what people say or what people do, but you decide that I'm going to stand for that which is right. Yes, sometimes even, amen, your family disown you. 
Amen. People in your community disown you. People that used to be your friends no longer want to be your friend. Amen. All because of the stand that you are taking. Amen. But in spite of what people say or do, I'm encouraging the people of God to stand on the word of God. And do not move. Do not compromise. Amen. Do not bring down right for wrong. Stand on the word of God. Amen. And as, and as Paul encouraged the saints, amen, to be strong. Amen. In the Lord and in the power of his might. Daniel refused, amen, to eat from the king's table. So Daniel told the man, amen, praise the Lord, give us ten days uh, and feed us with pulse and water. And if after ten days we don't look fair and well, amen, then do as you please. So the man listened to Daniel, and after ten days, praise the Lord, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego looked much fairer than those big men that ate from the king's table. See, when you stand for that which is right, God will give you favor. Don't seek after man's favor, but seek after the favor that comes from God. Because once God favor you, it does not matter who comes against you, praise the Lord. It does not matter what happens, if God favor you, then everything is going to work all right. I was telling someone, it's just like Caleb and Joshua, telling the ten, that the twelve that came back, but Caleb and Joshua was telling the congregation, because the ten said, we are not able to go, amen, because there are giants in the land. But Caleb and Joshua still the people and told them, if the Lord delight in us, the Lord will give us the land. Amen. So in other words, if God is for us, it doesn't matter what you saw in the land. God promises are sure. They are yea and they are amen. So don't let what your physical eyes see. Amen. Discourage you from what the word of God say. Be like Joshua and Caleb. If the Lord delight in us, the Lord will give us the land. And notice now, after the, the man realized that Daniel and those three men look much better, Daniel and those three boys continue to eat. Amen. Pulse, and they continue to drink water. But not only that, but I want us to read something that is very important as we go into chapter number 2. Praise the Lord. Verse number 20. Verse number 19. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Aniah, Michelle, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that wore in his realm. Praise the Lord. So notice now, amen, that because of the stand that Daniel and the three Hebrew boys took, they were able to stand in the presence of the king. And because of that, the king found them ten times better. Praise the Lord. Then those other men, you understand, that would eat from the king's table. Praise the Lord. So you see, when you stand for what's right, God will give you favor. And as David said in Psalms 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. And the reason why I don't fear no evil, because thou art with me. So notice now the king found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers and that were in his realm. So chapter number two and in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar, second reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. So Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and because of the dream, amen, his sleep left him. Amen. He wanted to sleep, but the dream troubled him. 
and he wanted to know what was the purpose or what was the reason for the dream. Now, let me say this. There are many dreams that we dream that have meaning to it. All right? But sometimes we dream a dream, as they say, tell a dream as a dream. Praise the Lord. But some dreams do have meaning. And the reason why dreams have meaning, some have meaning, is because that is one of the means by which God would speak to individual. All right? God would speak to individual through dreams, through visions, and through revelation. So some dreams, amen, are of importance or it have a reason. There's a reason behind some of the dreams that we have. But some dreams is just a dream. So Nebuchadnezzar was troubled by this dream that he had. Verse number two. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. Now notice now, the king called in all the magicians, all the astrologer, astrologers, and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans. Now, uh, another word for Chaldeans was just the um, primary name, amen, for Babylon. All right, for the people of Babylon, Chaldeans. But in this sense, they're calling the wise men Chaldeans. All right, so the wise men are called Chaldeans. So Nebuchadnezzar called all of them in so that he can inquire from them so that they can give him the interpretation and the understanding of his dream because he was unable to figure out his own dream. Praise the Lord. Have you ever had a dream where you're trying to figure out why you dreamt what you dreamt? Praise the Lord. And you just can't figure it out? And then there are times you dream, amen, and you're trying to remember it, but the dream leaves you? Praise the Lord. So sometimes dreams do puzzle us. And we ask ourselves, so why am I dreaming this? I wasn't thinking about this. I wasn't thinking about that. But sometimes you find yourself dreaming things. Whenever, amen, your heart is unsettled about your dream, you pray about it. Amen. And put it before the Lord. Uh, and if it's God's will to bring it back and to show you the meaning of the dream, God will bring it to pass. And many times, all you need to do sometimes with some dream is give it time. And as you give it time, amen, the Lord will show you. And it will come about in such a way that you probably might have done forgot about the dream. But when something happens or somebody says something or do something, then the dream come back to you. And then the Lord begins to speak to you now and say, Now, this is why I allow you to dream what you dream or dream what you dream. All right? So verse number three. And the king said unto them, I have dreamt a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans, meaning the wise men, to the king in Syria. Now, Syria means Aramaic. All right? So from Daniel chapter 2 to Daniel chapter 7, it is spoken in the language of Aramaic. All right? But after chapter 7, then it go back into the Hebrew way of speaking. All right? So the, the Chaldeans are the wise men. All right? Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Arabic. All right? Now, Arabic was the basic language that they spoke at that time. All right? Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac or Arabic. O king, live forever. Tell thy servants a dream, and we will show thee the interpretation. All right, so the wise man now is saying, King, tell us the dream, and then we will show you or give you the interpretation or the meaning of your dream. All right, verse number five. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans or the wise men, The thing is gone from me. If he will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses 
shall be made a downhill. So now listen now, the wise man said, King, you tell us the dream, and then we're going to give you the interpretation. But what the king wanted now was for the wise man to tell the king what he dreamt and also give the king the interpretation. All right, now there's a reason now why the king wanted to see if the wise men can tell the king what he dreamt and because if they are able to tell the king what he dreamt, all right, then the king would know that they are able to give the interpretation. All right, so this is why now the king now, in, in other words, the king had no faith in the integrity of the wise men or of their wisdom. All right, now I want to say something, but let's read the next verse. Praise the Lord. But if he show, but if he show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. Verse number seven. The wise men said, they answered again and said, let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of a certainty that ye would gain the time because ye see the thing is gone from me. Notice now, it's not that King Nebuchadnezzar forgot his dream. Nebuchadnezzar knew what he dreamt. All right, but he wanted, you understand, to test the integrity of the wise men. Now, what I got out from this as I was studying this, Nebuchadnezzar wanted to have people around him that he can be up, that he can find confidence in. All right, now to stand before the king, not anybody can stand in the presence of the king. Now, be very careful who you allow to speak into your life. All right? Be very careful because be careful of those that you surround yourself with. Because not everybody that you surround yourself with many times are for you. All right? So you got to be careful who you surround yourself with. I thought about the White House. If I make no mistake that before someone gets a job at the White House, they got to be fully vetted. Praise the Lord. So you now got to be very careful, all right, and allow the Holy Ghost to vet the people that are around you. Praise the Lord. Because remember now, the Holy Ghost knows people more than we know them ourselves. So we got to trust the Holy Ghost that the Holy Ghost will lead us, he will guide us, and trust that when the Holy Ghost said, all right, stay away from that person, that is time for us to listen to the Holy Ghost and stay away from them. When the Holy Ghost shows you that this is someone, amen, that is trustworthy, amen, someone that, praise the Lord, that means well to you, amen, now you can have peace of mind. But remember this, be very careful who you allow in your inner circle. Be very careful of those people that you say certain things to. I thought about what Jesus said. Don't cast uh, your pearl before what? Before the swine. Now there are some very important things about you. Do not share it with just anybody. All right, be very careful. Don't cast your pearl, those things that you value. You understand? Because not everybody have your best interest at heart. All right, but yes, there are some people in your life that do have your best interest at heart, even in the church. Not everybody in the body of Christ have your best interest at heart. So you got to be very careful. Yes, you love everybody. Yes, you treat everybody with love and kindness and respect. But remember this now, praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost knows everybody more than what we know. So trust the Holy Ghost, amen, to pick your company. And when the Holy Ghost selects your company, then you don't have to worry about who is around you. And sometimes, there are people around you, maybe the individual that will help you make it in. 
Praise the Lord. And as our late pastor used to say, sometimes people are the hammer that hammer you in. Praise the Lord. So there may be people in your life that may be the very reason for helping you to make it into heaven. But if you don't understand and you don't see what's going on, then you will look at it, oh, this person this way, this person, but you never know yet. It may be a possibility that God is using those people or that individual to bring you to a place of perfection where you can pray more, where you can read your Bible more, and where you can learn to demonstrate the love of God. You can learn to demonstrate, amen, true empathy. Praise the Lord. You can learn to demonstrate true forgiveness. So sometimes the Lord allows certain people to be among us for a purpose. Just like Judas was among Jesus for a purpose. Yes, Jesus knew who he was. From the time that the Holy Ghost selected Judas, because it was God's will that Judas would be one of Jesus' disciples. Now you would think, well, why would God want somebody like Judas to be one of his son's disciples? Well, somebody had to fulfill the scripture. Uh, and one of Jesus' disciples had to have a heart that Satan can use. Praise the Lord. So many times people around us, they have a heart that Satan can use. And many times you must learn to discern. Amen. That is not so much the people around us, but it is the devil, amen, that is able to use or influence that person's mind, amen, to say or do the things that they do. But the people of God must recognize, we must learn and trust God to give us a discerning heart that we can recognize when Satan is present. And if I make no mistake, I believe even Jesus, praise the Lord, at one moment told the apostles then that he must go up to Jerusalem and he must die by the hands of the Gentiles and the wicked men. And Peter began to rebuke him. Say, Lord, be it far from you. Amen. Ain't nobody going to kill you. This is not going to happen to you. But Jesus said, Peter, I just said it's going to happen. So Jesus picked up right away, amen, that it was not Peter, but it was Satan that was using Peter. And when Jesus discerned that through the Holy Ghost, then Jesus was able to say, get behind me, Satan, for you don't serve the things that are of God, but the things that be of men. So when you are guided by the Spirit, the Spirit will help you to discern people. All right? Discern their intent. And when the Holy Ghost helps you to discern it, many times you may know what people are up to, but you don't have to let them know what you're up to. All right? The Holy Ghost said, now I reveal to you what type or manner of person these people may be. It's just for your knowledge. All right? So that you would know how to work with people. And in leadership, this is a lesson for leaders. Amen. Let the Holy Ghost vet people, amen, that would be in our inner circle. Because not everybody around us are for us. But the Lord knows them that, what, that are for us. All right? So verse 8, the king answered and said, I know of a certainty that you would gain the time because you see the thing is gone from me. Verse 9. But if he will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. For ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me. Till the time be changed, therefore tell me the dream. And I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. So now the king always said, stop borrowing time. Praise the Lord. Huh? Don't, don't, don't borrow no time because I know why you need extra time. And the reason why you need extra time, you need to come up with a story. Huh? To tell me. And the king said, I know what you would want time for. You don't want time to tell me the dream. You want time to make up a story. All right, but the 
king said, tell me the dream. All right? And you're going to be able to do what? Tell me the interpretation. If you can tell me the dream, then I know, praise the Lord, huh, that I can trust your integrity because you are not with me when I dreamt the dream. And it was only me that dreamt that dream. Praise the Lord. Verse number 10. So the Chaldeans or the wise men answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's manners. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that adds such things as any magicians or astrologers or Chaldeans. And it is of a rare thing that the king required. And there is none other that can show it before the king, except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. So the wise men that acknowledge king, it is impossible for anybody to be able to look at somebody and tell them what they're trying. So you are asking of us something that is impossible. And the only way that you can get And if you don't tell me what I dreamt, I'm feeding you to the lions. You in big trouble. Because now, if, if, if you don't have connection to heaven, you're going to be in big trouble. Because you know of your own self, you can't tell me what I dreamt. The only person that knows what I dreamt is me and the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the king asked or inquired something that was what? Impossible. For this cause, praise the Lord, for this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. I tell you, I mean that king, king Nebuchadnezzar wasn't playing. He got upset uh, and he was ready to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. He was about to get rid of all of them because you realize these and I don't want somebody in my presence that is no good to me. They claim they know this, they claim they know that, but yet they don't have knowledge to tell me what I dreamt and give me the interpretation. So the king got angry and he was furious. Don't upset the king. Whenever you upset the king, you're asking for big trouble. That's why the Bible said, kiss the son. Lest he be angry. Praise the Lord. Uh, in other words, bow to the king. And when you bow to the king and show reverence to the king, the king just may stretch out his scepter and pardon you or show you mercy. All right. Verse number 13. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. And that the end they sought Daniel and his fellows to be saved. Now notice, <laughs> if all the wise men is going down, that include Daniel. That includes Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Praise the Lord. So the decree went on the king said, kill all of them. Even kill Daniel. Huh? Kill them three Hebrew boys also. I know I found favor in them, but right now, I'm so furious and upset, get rid of all of them. All right, verse number 14. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariel, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forward to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Ariel, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariel made the thing known to Daniel. So the captain told Daniel, hey Daniel, this is what's up. 
Praise the Lord. The magicians, the astrologers, the sorcerers, they went in, uh, and the wise men, and they could not give the king the interpretation of his dream and tell the king what he dreamt. And Daniel, your neck, amen, Shadrach, Meshach, and again, Benigo neck is also, amen, about to be cut off. Now listen. He answered and said to Arach, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Arach made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Notice the king didn't want to give the man no time, but he said, All right, Daniel, I'm going to give you some time. Praise the Lord, because Daniel found favor with the king. But listen, the king realized that Daniel, if you don't come up with the, uh, what I tell me, what I dream, and the interpretation, you're going down with the others also. Praise the Lord. Verse number 17. Then Daniel went into his house and made the thing known unto his three companions. Praise the Lord. All right. He went in and he made it known unto his three companions that they should, they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. So Daniel went home and told Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, listen, this is what's about to happen. Uh, but listen, these men in Babylon don't have the connection to heaven the way we have it. We are the ones that serve the true and the living God. So let us desire the mercies of God, the God of heaven, that the God of heaven will make known the secret unto us so that we should not perish along with the rest of the wise men. Verse number 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Now that's another way that God speaks to people, by the means of vision. So because of Daniel and his three uh, companions, they prayed. And they asked God to give them or show them the secret. All right. But notice now, God revealed the secret unto Daniel. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. And God, he changes the times and the seasons. He removed kings and set it up kings. He gave it wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealed the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light and the light dwelling with him. Now, one of the verse I always quote, quote, Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things belong to the Lord, uh, and the things that reveal uh, belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all of them. Let me say this. Whenever God has a secret, it will take God to reveal it. But once God reveals it, now it is no longer a secret. It is no longer a mystery. But once God has revealed it unto us, it is for us forever. God does not take the revelation back. But it's up to us now to protect the revelation of what God gave to us. But you will not ask for the revelation back. So you and I must safeguard, amen, the revelation that God has given to us and protect it. Because if you can't protect 5% revelation, don't ask God for 6%. Because God will say, no, you got to protect the 5. If you protect the 5 and honor what I give to you, then you can come back to me with confidence and I will give you an increase. So God will not give you an increase.
means if you cannot be a good manager. So let us manage the revelation through the word of God that God has given to us. Don't take it lightly because not everybody will receive such revelation. As Jesus told his apostles, unto you it is given to know the deep things or the mysteries concerning the things of heaven. So some things are given to the church and the church only, not to the world. This is why Paul said it like this, the natural minded man understanding not the things that be of God because the things of God are spiritually discerned. This is why the world cannot understand why the church do what they do. Why do we live the way we do? Why do we make the sacrifice the way we do? Because they are natural minded and they don't have the spirit. And this is why we are able to discern these things because we have the spirit. And because the spirit of God dwells in us, we know the hope that is laid up for us. So yes, we are willing to suffer. Yes, we are willing to go through. But we know what the word of God says. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither have it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for them that what? That love him. But Paul went on to say uh, that God had revealed through his spirit. So there are things that only the spirit can reveal to the church. And the Holy Ghost will speak to sinners but to draw them to Christ. All right? He would talk on their heart, amen, and give them a mind to come after Christ. In other words, the Holy Ghost is just like the porter. All right? He is the one that is able to help us to open our hearts to receive the gospel. And once the gospel now has been taught, then the Holy Ghost, praise the Lord, use what is taught or received by that individual and begin to develop that individual through the word of God that has been placed in that individual. All right? So God blessed Daniel and God showed Daniel the secret. All right? Now, if there are things that is going on that you may not understand, ask God to reveal it to you. Ask God to give you the interpretation because yes, there are times we face situations and we ask ourselves the question, Lord, what's going on? All right, some things trouble us, some things puzzle us and we want to know the meaning of it. Just like Rebecca huh? wanted to know what the meaning of the twins because the twin was struggling in our womb. Why am I getting such a yes, he said, this struggle in my womb? So she went to the Lord and inquired of the Lord. Why is this happening in my womb? Then the answer came, the revelation came. The reason why there is a struggling in your womb is because two manner of people are in your womb. And two nations is in your womb. And they are struggling for, you understand, the birthright. Praise the Lord. But remember this, Rebecca, when they come out, I'm letting you know, and I'm decreeing, praise the Lord, because God speaks of things that are not as though they are. So the answer came to Rebecca, when they are born, the twins, all right, the older will serve the younger. All right, so now when these things begin to happen, remember what I revealed to you concerning uh, the struggle that was in your womb. When things begin to happen, now remember what I told you. So there are times that God tells us things, but sometimes we forget. But when that time comes, the Lord will remind us, this is why I revealed to you what I revealed to you. This is why I allow you to understand what you understood back then. And I was preparing you for this day. So God don't wait for the day to happen to, to prepare us. God already is speaking to us. But many times we miss what God is saying to us. Because we are not in tune to the Holy Ghost. Our minds are carnal, so we cannot hear the spiritual things because the carnal mind is ruling over us. All right? 
Verse number 23. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what we desire of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Notice, Daniel did not take no credit for what God did. This is a stark warning for preachers. Don't take no credit for what God does. It is not us that do the work, but it's the Holy Ghost that dwells within us. As Paul said, we preach this gospel with the Holy Ghost, what? Sent down from heaven. Saints of God, don't take no credit for what the Holy Ghost do. Always give credit, amen, to God and acknowledge it wasn't me that song like that. It wasn't me that did the preaching. It wasn't me, my friend, but the credit belongs to God. I was able to do it because God blessed me to do it. Praise the Lord. So don't let people fill your mind up. And your head gets so, if your head swell up and so get so big. And you begin to lead to your own understanding and don't forget that it was God that blessed you. So don't forget to remember as one songwriter said, where all of your blessing come from. Give God the credit that is due. As Jesus said, render unto Caesar the things that be Caesar, and the things that be God, render it unto him. Verse 24. Therefore Daniel went in unto Aaron, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon, bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Then Ariad brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said, and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captains of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Bethesda, Are thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have dreamed and the interpretation thereof? Lord, this is beautiful. I love this. Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king had demanded cannot the wise men the astrologers and the magicians and the soothsayers show unto the king. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and make it known to the king, to the king Nebuchadnezzar, what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. So notice now, Daniel gave credit to God. Daniel said, King, it is no, it's not about men. Because the only one that can interpret that dream is God. Because God is the one that gave it unto you. And he knows how to reveal the secret. God knows every heart. Praise the Lord. Nothing in the mind is hid from God. God knows our uprising and our downsetting. God knows our coming in and our going out. Everything about us, God knows. Praise the Lord. All of us are naked in the sight of God. Praise the Lord. Verse number 29. As for thee, O king, Thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed. What should come to pass hereafter? And he that revealeth secrets make known to thee what shall come to pass. So it was God that gave Nebuchadnezzar or allowed Nebuchadnezzar to dream this dream. And there was a reason why God allowed the king to have this dream. But as for me, the secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation.
ministered to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. So now Daniel is going to tell him the dream without the king telling him. So now you know who the king will trust. Huh? You know after this, the king will trust the integrity of Daniel, the one that is going to tell him the dream without him telling Daniel what he dreamt. All right, verse number 31. Thou, O king, saw this, and behold a great image, this great image whose brightness was excellent, stood, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image head was of fine gold, its breast and its arms of silver, its belly and its thighs of brass. So now notice now it starts with gold. All right. Now after gold it goes what to silver, and after silver it goes what to brass. All right. So in, in other words, gold is superior to silver. And silver is superior to bronze. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So this is what he's showing him. You understand? Succession of kingdoms. And you understand their greatness. All right? Verse number 33. His legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest still that his stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them in pieces. So Daniel now is telling the king, this is the image that you saw. But not only that, thou saw it still that a stone was cut out without hands. All right, he saw a stone and it was not cut out by it from human hands. All right, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them in pieces. So this stone now, you understand, dismembered the image that King Nebuchadnezzar drank. All right, we'll go into that. Then was the iron, the clay, and the brass, and silver, and gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away. You ever seen the wind in the fire? And if there's a fire, you ever seen the wind is blowing? What happened? It blows the chaff away. Praise the Lord. So now Daniel now is saying, this is what the stone will do. All right? And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream. We will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Stop right there. Listen to what Daniel said. This is the dream. And we will tell. Well, wait a minute. Why is Daniel speaking in plural, not in singular? It was not, listen, the interpretation the revelation came to Daniel. But now Daniel is using the language, we will make known unto you the dream. Praise the Lord. I thought about something. You don't have to agree with me. God said, let us make what? Man. And let them have what? Dominion over the earth and of the sea and all of that. Then in verse 26, the Bible said, and God created man. So you see, God went from saying, let us, to saying, and God did. So I believe I've always said it this, as our forefathers, that God was speaking unto his heavenly host. They knew of God's plan of creation. All right? But it was not the angels that created man. So even though God said, let us do it, you understand, it was a matter of God speaking to his inner counsel. But it was not the angels that created man. So when Daniel now is the one that received the interpretation and the secret was revealed to him, but now Daniel is saying, we will tell you. What Daniel is saying now, I am able to tell you of this secret because I had companions that prayed with me and that they had knowledge about how the secret was revealed. All right, but the secret was not 
revealed unto them, but it was revealed unto Daniel, but they had knowledge of the revelation that Daniel received. So Daniel now is able to say, and we will tell thee of the dream. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. So Daniel is saying we, but it's not we doing the telling, it is one man that is speaking to the king and giving the king the interpretation. Thou, O king, are king of kings, for the God of heaven have given thee a kingdom, power and strength and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, the fowl of the heaven, and he had given into thy hand, and had made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of God. So now, Daniel is giving Nebuchadnezzar the understanding or the interpretation of the dream. So remember now, the dream was the head was a fine gold. So now, Daniel is saying, King Nebuchadnezzar, you are the head of gold. All right, so Nebuchadnezzar was the ruler of Babylon. All right, one of the, you understand, one of the ruling nations on this earth. All right, so the head of gold is Babylon. All right, thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall arise another kingdom that is inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass which shall bear over the earth. Alright, so now notice now you're going from gold to silver. Alright, that means, you understand, the next kingdom that was established upon the earth was known as the Mede and Persia. Alright, but now notice this now. When it is saying that they are less, it is speaking in terms, you understand, not in the size of the amount of people, it was in regard to how they manage or govern their people. All right, so it was not a matter of how many people was in the kingdom, but it was a matter of how the king would govern the people that is in the kingdom. All right? I believe first number 40. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as I am, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part of polished clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with burnt clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Now, many Bible scholars believe that this is speaking of uh, Rome. All right, many believe it's speaking of Rome, and there are some that don't believe that it's speaking of Rome, but it's speaking in terms of a future kingdom. All right, but we know, praise the Lord, after Babylon, all right, Nebuchadnezzar, then you have, the, you understand, the Medes of Persia, or Medo Persia. All right, then you move into the brass, which was conquered or known as the Greek Empire. And the Greek Empire, amen, whose ruler was Alexander the Great. Now, those of you that know history, Alexander the Great died at an early age, I believe at age 34. All right, but Greece conquered many territory. In a short period of time, Alexander the Great marches men all over the world, and they were able to conquer many lands. All right, but at the height of his quest, Alexander got sick and he died, you understand, at age 34, according to history. Now, I don't have time to go into it, but if you read in chapter 7 and chapter 8, it will give you some more information. All right, because when 
Alexander the Great died, praise the Lord, uh, four heads came up. All right, and those four heads represent those four men that was under Alexander the Great. When you read the history, after Alexander the Great died, his four generals begin to fight over territory. And this is what happens within churches. Sometimes when the leader passes on, then some folks begin to show their true colors and want to jostle and fight for position instead of just serving one another. They will jostle for, oh, I want to be the head. I want this territory. I want this territory. But where Alexander the Great went wrong, he never named a successor. So because he never named a successor, then you had all of these problems where his four generals wanted to, you understand, to jostle and fight for a position. Don't fight for no position. If the position is for you, God will give it to you. All right? Verse number 43. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So these people, praise the Lord, even though they may be among men, they will not cleave one to them. Because iron does not mix with what? With clay. And in the days of these kings, all right, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. So notice, after all of these kingdoms, now even though many of these empires have come and gone, there are still fragments of these empires. All right, there are still fragments of them all around the world. Now you notice, even when Rome, praise the Lord, was conquered, amen, by the, uh, trying to remember the, the nation of people, um, the, I think it might be the Gauls or something like that. But they was able to conquer Rome. All right. Then Rome, praise the Lord, began to spread out. All right. They began to spread out. What you see today called Europe, all right, was the breaking up, all right, of the Roman Empire. All right. So do your history, praise the Lord. And you don't understand because the Bible speaks of history. And history old. Uh, what they have to the Bible. So when you see these things happening, you can go back to the Bible and you can find it in the Bible. But listen, I will not argue. Some say the fourth kingdom is wrong. Some say it is still a future kingdom to come. All right. But what I do know and what I do believe in that God will set up his kingdom. All right. God will establish his kingdom upon this earth. And that's one thing I'm sure of. Praise the Lord. And that's one thing that I have confidence in. That it doesn't matter who wants to say what the fourth kingdom is. But I do know that God will set up a kingdom. That this kingdom that God set up will stand forever. Alright. Verse 45. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God has made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof is the interpretation thereof, sure. All right, so the dream is certain. And the interpretation is sure. In other words, what you dream and the interpretation, it will come to pass. All right, we're going to read on and then I want to finish up on Friday. So I can dive into some more and talk about it a little bit more. Verse number 47. The king answered unto them and said, Of a truth it is, that your God is a God of God, oh yes he is, and a Lord of kings, and a revealer of secrets.
secrets, seeing thou couldn't reveal their secrets. So you see, God now is getting the praise. All right? From an earthly king. Praise the Lord. You understand? God is getting the praise. Verse 46. The thing is verse Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet orders unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Seeing thou couldst reveal their secret, reveal their secret. Verse 48. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole providence of Babylon and the chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. So you see what the king did for Daniel? See, when you stand for what's right, don't worry about your gift. Huh? Your gift will make room for you. And your gift will bring you before great men. Let God cause your gift to bring you before great men. Remember this as someone said. The fruit on the tree don't fall off and go after somebody and say, come eat me. But the fruit on the tree attract those that want it. So those that want to eat the fruit must come and pick the fruit. But the fruit don't go after those that want to eat the fruit. Let God bring you. You understand? Let God reveal, you understand, your gift. And God will bring you before great men. Don't you try to force yourself. Don't try to gain no position. Let God establish you. And when God establishes you, everybody will know that God is with you. But in my closing, this is what I love about Daniel. That even though you receive all of these great gifts, he did not forget those that labored with him. And because he remembered his three companions that spent time praying with him, he said, how can I enjoy all of this blessing? And the three that labor with me is not enjoying all of these blessings. So listen to what Daniel did. Verse number 49. Then Daniel requested of the king, and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, all the affairs of the providence of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, that Daniel said, you know what, God, I thank you for all that you have done for me. And look, all that I have today, God, I am grateful. But Lord, I am grateful for those that have labored with me and that have helped me to be where I am at today. Remember, I look even in this organization. The only pastor right now that started his work from scratch is Bishop E.H. Hill. All the other bishops right now, we have all inherited what someone else already was over. You understand? God has given to us, you understand? We have walked into other men's labor. So, besides Bishop Hill, praise the Lord. The other four smooth, smooth stones, remember this now. We have walked into other men's labor. So, we got none to boast about because we start nothing from the ground up. There is only one man can say, God bless him to start it from the ground up. And that is Bishop E.H.L. So let us walk humble before the Lord. And walk so humble and thank God that God has blessed us to be where we are today. And remember, we didn't get here by ourselves. Somebody prayed for us. Somebody had us on their mind. Somebody took the time to pray for us. So don't let us forget where all of our blessings come from. We'll finish up Friday night if it's the Lord's will. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Nebuchadnezzar's dream. More to come on Friday in Jesus' name.